After retiring, I just dabbled in art until discovering online art classes in 2018. I found my niche as the pandemic hit. Thankfully, I had just set up a studio in my home where I still work today and where I started studying in earnest. I'm a voracious seeker of knowledge, so the principles of painting came easily. It was putting them into action that threw up a red flag. I couldn't get past myself. I was a perfectionist and very self-judgmental. My goal was to become a recovering perfectionist and to learn to paint only for myself. I want my work to reflect this hard-won goal. So my art is about the imperfect, about embracing and recording the trials and errors in my work. There are two conversations in my art. There's an in-your-face conversation that screams, look at me, and hopefully draws you in. And there is a quieter conversation that whispers, this is who I am and where I've been. I love the quiet conversation between the pencil rambling over the canvas and the leftover bits of the unloved marks. I love mark making, big juicy marks, structured marks, and faint hesitant marks that are almost erased. My love of mark making is further revealed in my exploration of line. My work is not about an emotion or a being or a thing. My work is about the process. It's about my response to the mark or shape or color that I've just put on the canvas. It's about experimenting and falling in or out of love with the result. The more layers a painting has, the richer its history. Robert Motherwell called this kind of development in his painting the correction of mistakes by feelings, while Hans Hoffman called it the push and pull of the painting. Walk the Line, now on display at Craighead Green Gallery, is one of four pieces in a series, started within the restraints of an initial division of the canvas into two uneven parts, light and dark, of the use of a Zorn palette, black, white, red, and yellow, and of the exploration of line, shape, and value, while leaving on the canvas only what is necessary to make the painting complete. Because this work has so few elements, variety is critical. Variety of the lightness and darkness of values, of the scale of shape, of the thickness and edge quality of line, and of the speed with which the line is drawn. I paint and clarify until I have elements that I love. I spend more time looking than painting. This kind of painting is meditative, yet it's a struggle. I struggle, yet when I finish, I see a reflection of myself, my life, my shapes, and my memories of a childhood full of joy and a life full of living.